makes art. And art is your creative gift. It is that thing that only you can do. Uh, and, and then you've got to share it with the world. And then how you get it to spread, how you make money. Uh, these are all things that I, that I cover in, in the book. But um, the question about whether or not I can make a go at this, the question about whether or not chasing my passion is risky, in the book, the whole point of the book is to debunk that. And, and to say, look, if you want to starve today, uh, or if you want to make art today, um, and, and you think you're going to starve, that really is a choice. And and the reason it's a choice is because uh, in this book, I, I basically cover over 500 years of history from famous artists, musicians, even entrepreneurs, people like Steve Jobs and Jim Henson and, and so forth. And, and we look at the people whose work really thrived and who did incredible creative work. They did not starve for their work the way we think an artist must. They found a way to support their work and get it to spread. Now, the opposite of a starving artist is not a rich artist. Michelangelo, it turns out, was very rich, and I talk about that in the book. Um, but that's not the opposite. That's not what we're going for here. Um, the opposite is a thriving artist, which means you are doing the work that you were meant to do. And yes, you're making a living, uh, you're thriving, but most importantly, you're happy. You're full of life. You're doing this thing that God put you on the earth to do, and you don't have to beg or starve or struggle to do it. And I think whether you want to be a coach, whether you want to go into full-time ministry, or whether you want to be a full-time author, when we think, oh, this is something that I really, really want to do, uh, I, I run into so many people, especially in faith circles, who start apologizing for that, their work. They start uh, explaining why this will never be a vocation, right? In some ways, especially in the ministry world, we think, well, I can't make any money off of this because this is ministry. Or I, or I can't make any money off of this because this is art. Or I'm just helping people, right? Um, that's not true. And in the book, I, I debunk that. I talk about why many of history's greatest artists did not starve the way we think they did, including even like a Vincent Van Gogh, uh, who is sort of this classic starving artist. Turns out not true. Uh, he wasn't rich like Michelangelo was, but his brother, Theo, paid all of his expenses for 10 years, which was the expanse of his art career, and many, many others. On top of that, I interviewed hundreds of working creatives to today in every kind of field imaginable, cartoonists, musicians, uh, writers, coaches, you name it. Uh, and I and I asked them the same set of questions. And it turns out the ones who were thriving, the ones who were making a full-time living off of their work, having the time of their lives, doing the work that they were meant to do that only they could do and and, and truly succeeding at it, and those who were starving, um, the thriving artists did a number of the same things. And the and it turns out that these things that they did, there were about 12 of them that I outlined in the book, uh, these are the same things that the starving artists actively did not do. Actively, meaning like they chose to not do these things, things like marketing your work, connecting with the right people, charging what you're worth, basic business practices. Uh, but because they were artists, they thought, well, I don't need to do that. Or more right. importantly, I'm not. I don't even have a business. I'm not even thinking entrepreneurially. And so, this is a book that helps you uh, build a business around your creative gift, whatever it might be. But you have to be willing to make that choice. You have to choose to thrive, because in the book, I basically say that if you are starving, that's because of a story that you're telling yourself. And it turns out, whatever story, whatever myth, and a myth is just a story that you tell yourself to make sense of the world around you. There was a famous conversation between C.S. Lewis and J.R.R. Tolkien. C.S. Lewis was basically an agnostic at this point, wondering about if there was a God or not. J.R.R. Tolkien was a pretty committed Catholic. And um, uh, uh, Lewis says to Tolkien, he goes, well, those are just myths. He's talking about the Bible and the biblical narrative. Those are just myths. And Tolkien says to Lewis, but some myths are true. Some myths are true, right? So the myth of a starving artist is a story that creative people tell themselves to help them make sense of why they're not making any money off of their art. So you can have a starving artist mindset in any kind of vocation, any kind of field, coach, entrepreneur, writer, whatever. It just basically means that you're saying, well, I could never dot, dot, dot. And as soon as you say that and believe that, Guess what happens? The things that we believe about ourselves end up becoming true. The point of the book is if you start telling yourself another story, the story of the thriving artist, guess what happens? That ends up becoming true too. You thrive. 